Here we go. Oh, you guys. It's been a long week. It has been a long week. Today's drink, good old tried and true Sierra Nevada. And the koozie is to have and to hold and to keep your beer cold. Matt and Ashley, 1021, 2016. The difference with this koozie compared to my other one that's one of my favorite koozies is I know who Matt and Ashley are. <laughs> hey guys, Chevy Rell here. We are on episode 17. Thanks to everyone who decides to take time out of their busy and hectic schedules, as I feel like everyone's lives tend to be busy and hectic. Uh, but the fact that you have chosen to take some of your time and listen to me ramble is very nice of you, and uh, I thank you. Of course, all new subscribers and old. Uh, new subscribers or anyone who has not watched my introduction video yet, Dan pointed out that I don't always put the eye there even though I point to it and whenever he mentions it, I do go back and add it. <laughs> so if I ever point up here and I say the little eye in the corner, if you wanna learn more about me, my introduction video, if it's not there, it's like my first video. Or hit another episode and the eye will be there. Or let me know and I'll add the eye if I forget. The reason that I do for all of you new subscribers that might not have watched like all the past episodes, trust me, no, nobody's expecting you to do that. <laughs> if you have not watched the past episodes, the reason that I did the introduction video is because there's a lot of podcasters that I will start watching well into their podcasting uh, world, you know, multiple episodes in and let's face it, some people just don't have the time to go back and watch, you know, 30, 40, 50 some episodes. And I find myself, some of you podcasters who are watching me that might not do this, I find myself wondering about you and I wish that there was a place that I could go to kind of get the skinny on you. And that's why I did the introduction video. Plus, it helps me from repeating myself as well as uh, boring you with the same details all the time. That being said, I try to stick to mostly fiber content. I know that there are a lot of chatty people sometimes I just wanna see the fiber stuff or I might just have time for the fiber stuff. So I, and I'm one of those people that when they're like, I'm gonna put a timestamp here and you can skip all this. I feel bad, I just can't, if I commit to watching the episode, I have to watch it. Like I feel bad skipping ahead. So I try to not be rambly about non-fiber type stuff. Of course I ramble, it's just in my nature. But it's usually, somewhat related to something fiber. That being said, this episode is going to be a little different. Dan and I have had an extremely tough week and I'm also not somebody who comes on here and is like, cue the violin music. I'm usually very happy, but I am also very real and I have zero filter. So y'all get to hear about my trials and tribulations of the last week. If you would like to skip forward, you are more than welcome to do so. So I'm just gonna start out with a little life shit right here. We live in Indiana and Indiana, I swear, is like the land of the lakes. Like like here, you know how people on the coasts are, are like, we're gonna go to the beach, we're gonna go to the beach for the weekend, we're gonna drive up to the beach on Saturday. Here in our world, in the Midwest, you go to the lake. People have lake houses, like that's, that's what you do. You go to the lake on the weekends. Well, we are fortunate enough to have very dear friends who live on the lake. We had this weekend planned for a very long time. They have a pontoon boat, the lake is beautiful. Uh, we took the camper up there, we were spending the weekend. The way their house is, they have uh, a walkout basement, but the basement is their garage, so a walkout garage. So their house is on top of the garage and 
on the one side, there's a retaining wall that is holding up their yard, basically off their deck to their home above. We were all sitting out there, the boys were messing with the boat, whatever. Ditto was on his lead. I did not see it happen, but um, Olive, it sucks so bad, you guys, I can't even fucking begin to explain it to you. Ditto was on his lead, and I believe that Blind Olive was in the yard, and he like moved so the lead went across the yard and I think that it tripped her because of course she couldn't see it and she fell off uh, the retaining wall about four feet down to concrete. Of course I spazzed, it was terrible. Like I, I could never have human children. I know in my head that like if a kid falls and scrapes his knee, you're just like, oh, you're okay, you're okay. You know, like, and I do that with kids. Why can I do that with kids but not with animals? I think it's because kids feed off you. Like if he fell and he or she fell and scraped its knee and you're like, oh, you're good, you're good. And then, the, you know, where, whereas if you're like, <gasps> they immediately start bawling, you know? <laughs> Dogs don't get that. So when Olive fell, she was clearly hurt and hurt pretty bad. Joe said that she saw her leg go sideways. You could, you could just tell it was bad. So I'm holding her, Joe went and got her ice and we're trying to call the vet. We're up at the lake, of course, we're an hour from home. There was an emergency number on, like I'm thinking, figures, I'm so dumb. I'm thinking like, you know how in the movies, they're in some small little town and they call the emergency vet and the vet like who is on call for emergencies then meets you at the veterinarian clinic like out in the country and they do x-rays and yada yada. Well, there was nobody. It said the emergency number, you had to call the number to the local vet that was right there at the lake. They were like, call the emergency number on your business card or your last statement. I'm like, dude, what? So I'm like, I'm, I'm not your customer. What's your emergency number? So Mike's on the phone and Joe's on the phone and I'm calling Knives which is our like 24 hour vet care clinic. It's like North, North, Northern Indiana or Northwestern Indiana veterinarian emergency services or something. They just call it knives. So I call them and I explain, I'm up at Sylvan Lake. We called the vet. They didn't have their number on there. Uh, would you happen to have a number for him? She's like, we are the number. So I immediately turn into mama bear and I don't know for all of you with human children if you would do this or not, but I was like, okay, then why did the vet not just have that number on the answering machine instead of say, locate the emergency number on your invoice? Wouldn't that be helpful? And then I said, well, you're an hour away though, isn't, there's no place closer. And she's like, we are the only 24 hour emergency hospital within a two hour radius of Fort Wayne. So, so of course I'm freaking out. My dog, I have no idea what's wrong with her. I know something is broken, terrible. And I am like, real shitty at this point and I said so you're telling me now keep in mind all the lake where where I am like all the lakes are kind of up in that area about an hour ish away right there are lots of people there this cannot be the only animal emergency in that area it's very busy up there and I said so let me get this straight if my dog had gotten hit by a car and was bleeding profusely, like going to bleed out, the answer would be that I would have to drive an hour to Fort Wayne. Yeah, I'm sorry, yep. So if any of y'all go to Indiana Lakes in the Northwestern area of the state, know that because 
that's scary. Like now I want to wrap my dog in a bubble. Dan had the camper packed up in like 15 minutes. So I'm holding her. We get in the vehicle. We have the camper in tow. We drive to Knives. We get there. Keep in mind, last Friday was a full moon. Saturday night at the vet was ridiculous. They have eight rooms. They All of them are full. They have people in the waiting room. They have one doctor. And we were sitting there like, meanwhile, Olive is broken and in pain. And I, like, I am keeping it together at this point. Like, I'm obviously sad, but I'm like, whatever we gotta do, I get it. I know that even for humans, an emergency room visit is like three hours, right? Like, I, I get it. So I'm waiting my turn. We have our the door open. You have no idea the BS that people take their animals to emergency vet care on the weekends, like the 24 hour vet clinic. Now I won't discuss numbers, but it is not cheap at all. It is just to walk in the door is expensive. And there was a chick that came in with a Jack Russell that said, yeah, sorry if this is you, but I'm totally throwing you under the bus lady. Yeah, my dog was swimming earlier today and I believe that he may have ingested some water. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you, are you serious right now? Like, he ingested some water? Like, that's something that you wait till Monday when you go to your vet. Or you watch him to see if anything weird happens. Like, whatever. So this is what these people are dealing with. Meanwhile, I have a busted dog. And I'm freaking out. So we wait our turn. The doctor comes in. You guys, I cannot tell you how cool this doctor was he was obviously in the weeds for any of you who serve tables before in the weeds means like you're you're obviously behind like he had eight rooms full of emergencies plus kind of emergencies for some people eight rooms full of emergencies a waiting room full of people and when he by the time he made it in to see us he was so cool he did not act like you know we were an inconvenience he did not act like he was rushed he was kind compassionate empathetic i am totally writing him a thank you card i i told my vet about it it, it, he was awesome. So they take Olive back to be x-rayed. She has a broken elbow. And unfortunately, we couldn't do anything until we saw the vet on Monday. He said there are two options, major extensive surgery with hardware or to amputate the leg. We leave. So, you know, and of course, Dan and I are talking about, I mean, oh my God, you guys, these adulting decisions. I'm not made for this shit. I live in La La Land. That's where, that's like my happy place. Eh. I, like, I did not. So, you know, Dan and I are having to talk about this and figure out what we're going to do. We go home with a broken dog. I am heartbroken, you guys. It's for one, I feel like it's my fault. Like I should have been there to catch her. I should have been watching her. Like I feel bad that she got all tangled up in this lead. I don't even know if she got tangled up in the lead. I'm just assuming that's how she fell off the wall. Um, because she obviously, I mean, you know, she's blind, but she does not step down. She is very like, like she knows she's blind. Like she doesn't step off steps. She puts her foot out like this, and if she can't feel anything, she she turns around and feels her way through. Like, she would never have walked off it on purpose. So, I'm feeling like it's my fault. Meanwhile, we have this broken dog that is so pathetic and heart-wrenching, and we have to wait until Monday. So, she had to sleep all night Saturday, all day Sunday, all night Sunday, and then she stayed, Dan had like a really busy day at work so he couldn't get out of work until later. So her appointment wasn't until Monday night. So that entire time she was broken. 
Now, she was on drugs, obviously they gave her meds and she got the good stuff on Saturday night. It really didn't seem to bother her. I think the hang up was more with me than it was with her. I broke my ankle. I had to wait a week before I had surgery and it was terrible. Like when you're broken, I mean, surgery wasn't any walk in the park, but it was 10 times better than when I was walking around broken. And that's all I could think is that here she is with this broken leg and how much pain she's in. We go to the doctor on Monday. We, I'll, I'll just let you see her. If anybody is squeamish or doesn't wanna see this, feel free to fast forward. She's fine, she's good, um, she's healthy now. We've kind of fixed her, but if you don't wanna see it, just fast forward. I'm just glad she's here with us alive and well, so stand by. So this is Olive now. She's our tripod. Um, when we went in to see our vet on Monday, she viewed the x-rays. I guess they have this really cool thing um, that you can plug in. They pay to have access to this database and you can put in um, the type of dog it is, the type of injury it is, and tell whether it's probable to fix it. And it was not for her. She said the best option was amputation. I'm glad that that's the route we took because she was able to get in the next day. So she had it amputated on Tuesday. We picked her up Wednesday morning. Today is Thursday. And I'm so glad she's okay. These windows are really hot. I'm gonna take her back and put her in her cool room. We have like a little nest for her. She's leaps and bounds better than when she was broken. She goes to the bathroom fine. She gets around fine. Um, I think that just getting it off helped. Um, you can tell she feels way better. In all honesty, it doesn't really even act, I mean, she doesn't, act like it even really bothers her all that much so I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's been I don't have a whole lot of knitting or at least I don't feel like I do this has consumed our world all week and like I took vacation days and it's just it's been tough but um so glad she's still with us like we've said my friends will say, oh my God, how many lives does that dog have? Because we now have a 10 year old blind diabetic three legged pug who has also been diagnosed with dry eye. So <laughs> she is definitely our little scratch and dent, which are my favorite anyway. It just sucks that it happened. It really, really sucks, but like I said, it doesn't seem to bother her any at all, so we're glad for that. So I'll go put her in her little nest that we've made for her, and uh, I'll come back and we'll actually talk about some fiber-related type stuff. Any of y'all who come up to Allegan, will, she'll be there, so if, you're, if you want to meet Olive, she'll be there, won't ya? Hmm. Good girl. Okay, now that I'm covered in olive hair, I I can honestly tell you I have not cried this much in years. Like you guys, ugly cry. Like banshee wailing ugly cry. <laughs> as soon as we left the vet on Saturday night, that's when it, it when I broke down. So once we decided that amputation was the thing and it happened and she made it through surgery and she was okay and I know she's going to be okay, like, whew, I'm good now. But I wanted to share that with y'all. Let's talk some fiber stuff, shall we? I do have an FO and I'm obviously unprepared. 
Here they are. Hold on, I'm gonna fix these blinds, goodness. Sorry if that changed the lighting, but the blinds were on my nerves. Okay, oh my God, they're still on my nerves. Urgh. Where is it though? I can't tell where it's coming from. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, here's my FO. These are my Rose City Rollers. This little stitch marker here is where I was the last time you saw these. I just had two wee cuffs. I knit all my socks two at a time. The Rose City Rollers pattern is cuff down. I typically do toe up, but I will follow a sock pattern depending on you know what it calls for sometimes. I don't mind doing that. Like if a pattern calls for a certain thing, I'll follow it. I don't, I'm not so die hard that I'll only do toe up socks. Like I'm not like that. This is Rose City Rollers pattern. It's a free pattern. They are a hair short. If I was a good knitter, I probably would have ripped the toe out and put a couple more rows in, but let's just face it. I don't give a fuck don't care. I'm thinking that once I block them that maybe they'll stretch out a little bit. I almost wondered if my gauge was too loose because I could see my toenail polish through the toe, but I think that it's mainly just because they're too short. I have eight stitches to an inch, um, which I thought was normal. I, I guess some people do 10 stitches to an inch, right? I knit them on size ones. I don't know, what do you guys get per inch on your socks? I feel like my gauge is always looser than my friend's gauges. Like my friend Jody, man, her socks are like steel. You, They're like bulletproof, they stand up by themselves. And they're always like super pretty and I feel like my stitch definition isn't nearly as good as hers. But for me to get it as tight as she does, I think I'd have to go down to like double zero or something and no, that, no, that is not happening. The yarn that I used for these Rose City Rollers is, oh, and the Rose City Rollers pattern is by Mara Catherine Briner. I think, if it's not, I'll correct it. Everything is always linked if you're a new subscriber. I even recently had a viewer uh, send me a message asking what a hat pattern that I was wearing in episode six was because I hadn't linked it. And I thanked her, like, thank you so much for letting me know. And I sent it to her and I added the link to the show notes. So if y'all ever are looking for something that you don't see in the show notes, let me know and I'll add it. I also added my beer bottle cooler thing. A lot of you guys liked that. That was actually a gift from my mother-in-law who's pretty rad and I found one that was just like it on Amazon. They're they're pretty cool. I like them. The yarn for this Rose City Roller pattern that I used, Rose City Rollers pattern that I used is uh, the Cyborg's Craft, the Cy, goodness, the Cyborg Craft Room and she you can't get her yarn anymore. It was a special colorway from YarnCon, I believe 2015. I knit a sweater out of it. I had some left over. I am going to wear these shorty socks. The whole reason that I knit them is because, well, for one, I don't have any hand knit shorty socks, but I want to wear them with my Vans. Whips. I worked on my drop cloth sampler a little bit. Drop cloth is embroidery. The pattern is by Rebecca Ringquist. She has multiple different uh, templates. What do you call it? Patterns, you know. This is slow moving. I just pick it up and do a little, little part here and there, nothing big. I just, since the last time you saw it, I did these stitches right here, and I'm gonna move over to this area next. So, nothing big, but I worked on it, so I wanted to show you. Next up is my pinky, pinking, like pinking, peeking sheer, I don't know what. The peeking sweater. This is being housed in my kitchen counter crafter. Is that right? 
kitchen counter crafter by Java Jenny bag. Of course, you know, beer, hello. I got this bag at YarnCon a few years ago. It's cool because it is like a snappy bag. I am knitting this out of Plucky Traveler Sport in the pure Michigan colorway. If you recall from the last episode, I, for some reason, felt like a gambling woman and only bought three skeins, which would put me 45 yards short of what the pattern called for, which was so dumb because I always use more yarn. I was hoping, praying, crossing my fingers. This is my third skein and I could just tell it was not gonna work. In a perfect world, I was gonna try and get it done by Allegan. I wasn't gonna like be mad at myself if I didn't, but I do like a goal, so I was gonna try and do that. I could tell that I was going to run out of yarn. As some of you know, you past watchers, I am new to Plucky. I went to the Plucky pop-up. Uh, there's a video on that if y'all are interested in Plucky type things. I did not know how their yarn worked. I knew that you couldn't just pop on their website and grab something that you know you needed. Uh, I know it's hard to get. I know that you know they only release some things at some times. So I immediately freaked out and thought, shit, I'm not gonna be able to finish this peaking. Like watch me put this much time into this sweater and not be able to finish it. And then I was going to cry. I emailed them explaining the situation. It did take some days. Like I was concerned. Why am I not getting a response? <laughs> but they did respond. They said, typically, you know, they don't, but they just so happened to have, I think she said they had like two or three skeins. I only needed one. She sent me a special thing that I could buy it. It's on its way here. It, it shipped yesterday. So I might not have it done by Allegan, but I will at least be able to finish it, which I was scared wouldn't be happening. Okay, it's kind of bunched up. I don't even know how to show this. So the last time you saw this, this is gonna be so hard, you guys. Like, hashtag hot mess, I don't even know how to do this. The last time you saw this, I believe this lace panel was blocked. I'm gonna lose stitches, hold on. This lace panel was blocked and I, no, I blocked them both together. I think I just had two lace panels blocked the last time you saw it. Oh, hey, how about for you new subscribers that don't know what it looks like, I'll show you a picture, how's that? Okay, so you knit the two lace panels first and then you pick up on either side. So the one side I have complete, if you, if you can see it, which it's hard because it's all scrunched up on the needles. So you pick up along, uh, you pick up along the edge. Here's the sleeve. You'll seam it, and it has you can't really see it, but you know you have that high low, or that um, swoopy of the. I talk real good. You have this going on, this swoop, which is what I love about it. So the one side's done, I'm on the other side. I kind of slowed down. I mean, obviously I have a lot. The only, I'm just wee into the side. So I still have a lot of knitting to do, but I slowed down because I was picturing myself putting all this time into this sweater, trying to get it done for Allegan, and then Plucky coming back and saying that they don't have it or something. And I mean, I looked on D stashes, I put it on my stories on Instagram. Like I, I was scared that I was going to spend all this time on it and not be able to find the yarn. So I slowed way down. Now that I know I'm getting the yarn, I will start knitting it again. And then I will, you know, keep a little bit and alternate that skein, the new skein in when I get it. I will tell you, Plucky is 
super great. I bet I wouldn't even have to alternate it. I mean, those ladies are on top of it. If it is a hair off, they are no bueno and they put it in, they call it something I can't remember, like one hit wonders, I think. I bet I wouldn't even have to alternate it, but I'm going to. In a perfect world, I'll have it done by Allegan, but don't like hold your breath and nothing because I'm not gonna. <laughs> Next up is my Susu. I don't even know why I'm showing this to you because it's silly. For those of you who are new that don't know what it looks like, there it is. The Susu is by Nora Gaughan, G-A-U-G-H-A-N, if I'm saying that correctly. It is a paid for pattern. I am using also Plucky Solo, held double in the deep dish colorway. This is the back, and this is where I was the last time. This is my Nitty by Nature stitch marker. And, or progress keeper, and I've only gotten that far. So, you know, there it is. I've been, I was really, well, first off, the olive thing. Second off, I finished those Rose City rollers, and I busted a hump on the peaking because, like I said, I want to get it done. So, that's that. These motherfucking booties. I kind of made up with them, I suppose. I am knitting, knitting. I said that the whole time. Oh, something just fell out of my bag. I don't know what it was. I'm glad I looked for that. It's my button that I'm using. Okay, these are crocheted, not knit. They are the Crocodile Booties by Bonita Patterns. Um, designed by Lianca. Azule, which I don't think I said the last time. Uh, actually, Aquila Dahan, it is Aquila. I know how to say it now. Uh, she does the Lefty Knitter podcast. Is it the Lefty Knitter or a Lefty Knitter? One of them. Lefty Knitter podcast, Aquila Dahan. She's awesome. She uh, knows her or knew her or there or she was like local to her somehow. So that was kind of small world, you know. But these are the booties. They are crocheted. This is the crocodile stitch. Y'all know these fought me and fought me and fought me. And I got one of those little pissers done. Okay. Now, they'll look obviously better when there is a lethal foot in there. I feel like the yarn might be a little too variegated for the crocodile stitch. Um, they're still cute. I wouldn't pick to use this yarn again, but these are for a friend who is having a baby. She wanted them and this is what she's getting because as many of you know, this pattern has fought me tooth and nail from the get and I'm over it. So it's actually, they look better in person than they do on the screen, I feel like, as far as the scales go. But there's one. I have the other just boot done, and then you add the cuff. So I'm hoping the next time I record, these will be done. These are being housed in my naughty knitting sack. If you all don't follow her and you like snarky, naughty things, you need to go. Just take a gander at that inside fabric. Flashing you a little punani there, I'm just saying. Her stuff's real fun. Oh, almost forgot. The yarn for that is by Deep Dyed Yarns, and it is in her Silk Road Speckle colorway, I believe. Yes, Silk Road Speckle colorway with her Juju Salt. <laughs> Juju Salt. I don't even know where salt came from. Silk, salt, four letters in the word. I don't know. Juju sock base, and there's faux cashmere in it, and I thought it was real cashmere. So if you ever see that base, I and like soft things, and you know, like are ordering it online and can't touch it, like just trust me when I say it. Worth it. My last whip is being held in 
my Fat Squirrel Speaks project bag, the library card bag that I love. It's old school. I've had it a long time. This is the In the Light Shawl, which, well, let me just show you what it looks like. This was an enabling, sorry, my printer is terrible, but this was an enabling by Lacey from The Knitted Cupcake. If y'all don't watch her, go check her out. She is a sweetie. She's one of my West Coast peeps. And I had no business casting something new on. I saw hers and then I couldn't like stop thinking about it. So I dug through my stash and cast it on. This is how far I've gotten. First off, the last time y'all saw it, I was right here, which that's a, my little camper progress keeper from Kelly, Kelly Marie Yarns. She was my, uh, drawing a blank, drawing a blank, fiber share partner. And she sent me that because she knows I'm a camper. This is a fade style shawl. Oh my God, you guys, isn't it awesome? Ugh. I am so, so flipping excited for this. It is kind of the only thing that I want to knit on. And it is potato chippy. You hold the yarn double. It's garter. It's squishy. It's going to have fringes. Like, dude, you have to knit it. You must knit this. Sorry, that was creepy. I'm kind of creepy but you know. It's three colors. The first color, this pink color, is Lahala from Ba Yarns, and it is, I don't know if I said their colorway the last time, did I? Sealed with a kiss. This is Ba Yarns Lahala. This is how much I have left of that first. I have not weighed it. I wonder if it's enough for a mini. Hold on, let me weigh it, my scale's right here. I have 15 grams left. The next color is Nitty in Color, which is this right here. Oh my God, you guys, isn't it awesome? I love it so much. This is Supernova, and it is, do, 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 on her Hardcore Sock Bait. Do, 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 that's on, that, sorry, that's like a, what is that, Price is Right? Oh, sorry, it's been a long, crazy week. I can't believe that I can even form sentences. Half the time I can't. If you asked Dan, he would say I couldn't. This is Nitty in Color on her Hardcore Sock Base, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and it was a 463 yard skein, or is going to be, was. I'll tell you how much I use when I get done with this color. For the Lahala, the Ba Yarns, that is 100% superwash merino and a 400 yard skein. So I have 15, it was a 115 gram skein and I had 15 grams left. So I used 100 grams of it for the first color. And then I'll let you know the same on this. So you fade and you like drop some and pick some up and the way it's faded is awesome. My third color Oh, you guys, these colorways make me so flipping happy. I am going to wear the crap out of this shawl. I know I am. I'm. It's going to be my go-to. I can just tell. These colors make me just freaking happy. Like, I'm, I'm just happy. They make me smile when I look at them. I can't wait to see how these fade. This is Atomic Fibers in the Naughty Unicorn colorway. Oops, sorry, sorry. Fail. I suck at this game. Okay, let's try it again. Oh God, I feel like I, I don't. When I look like that, it looks like I have really dark circles under my eyes. There's probably some girl out there going, you need concealer. But when I do this, I don't, do I? I don't wear makeup. I do have some mascara on because if I don't, I look like I need blood or something. <laughs> Let's try this again. Atomic Fiber Company. 
I'll never get the lighting down, just so you guys know. So if you ever expect for me to do that or are waiting for me to do that, it's not going to happen. So if it bugs you, like, bye. Thanks for coming. This is Naughty Unicorn on her Posh Sock Base. 100 grams, 463 yards, also merino nylon. So I'll kind of keep you posted. Sorry, Dan came in and needed my help. And I have no idea what I was talking about. I know I was talking about the In The Light shawl. Can't remember. I do know that I did not say who that was by. The In The Light shawl is by Casey Day Crozier. There is a fringe option and a non-fringe option. I, of course, want the fringe, baby. Oh, yeah. So I'm hoping to have lots of that done the next time you see it. It seriously is so much fun. I love it. That was my last whip. I am on to enabling. I do not have a lot of enabling. I do have a couple of enablings. So last weekend before tragedy struck, uh, we went with our friends to a place called the Black Pine Animal Sanctuary that is in Albion, Indiana. I believe their address is Albion. And it is a sanctuary for animals that, for exotic animals that have been uh, mistreated, confiscated in, you know, criminal type situations where they you know you're not allowed to have exotic animals I mean there's all sorts of different ways that they've received these animals it is lions tigers bears oh my one of the gals said that they used to have t-shirts that said lions and tigers and bears black pine because it's black pine animal sanctuary which I thought was really cute they were having one of their events they have multiple events throughout the year and this event was something to do with it was like an arts event like so they had vendors all over and there was this gal and I got a painting isn't he cute? It's for the stuff room, you guys. It's so cute. The artist, uh, she goes by, I don't know if it's her name or not, Maggie Dye, D-Y-E, and she was a doll. She was super sweet. She was so excited that she was selling her art. It, it made my heart happy. There was, it was this one and an octopus. Rebecca, you'll be glad to know that Dan chose the scary anglerfish over the octopus. Any of you who watch Mean Girls know that Rebecca hates octopus <laughs> or you'd be looking at it. So we chose the angler. You can't tell because of the color or the lighting, but that is his eye and his little angler's gold. It's really cool. So I was happy to get that. My only other enabling, I have wanted one of these pillows forever, and I finally got this one. <laughs> uh, I love it so much, so I can sit on my couch and nobody knows. And then you play with it, and it says, I fucking hate people. And I love old timey, you know, like the flowers are vintage and yada yada, so. I ordered it off Etsy. I will link it. I'm a terrible person. Can't remember who I got it from, but her information will be down there. I promise. Next up is events, which really the only event, fiber event that I have is the Michigan Fiber Festival in Allegan. You've heard me talk about it before. It's coming up quick. It is August 17th through the 19th. Dan and I and the pups, as mentioned prior, will be camping there uh, on premises. So if any of you are local or camping there as well, please let me know. We'll be around. Any of you who are on Instagram or watch some of the other local to us in the area podcasters may know, we are having a podcaster meetup. They are going to allow us to be in the 
they called it the carousel. It's not like really a carousel. I'm guessing it's just a round building. I don't really know. It's on the fairgrounds or at the fairgrounds. And we will be there Saturday from three to five. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the podcasters who are attending and I'll link all their stuff. But that way, if y'all are going and you're going to go to the podcasters meetup, that will give you a chance to like and subscribe to their stuff. That being said, if you haven't liked and subscribed, feel free to do that. But that will give you a chance to like and subscribe their stuff prior, watch some of their videos, get to know them before the meetup. Because some of these people I, I didn't know were local to me. So it's been nice to, you know, meet new people. That's what this is all about for me. Mean Girls actually touched on it in their last podcast. It's really weird that there are some podcasters in our world that, like, I don't even know how to say it. I guess in, in my brain, the reason that I do this is, I mean, multiple reasons, but it's because I wanna meet fellow fiber lovers. I want to learn from you guys. I want to be more of a part of this community. I enjoy creating new friends. And there are some podcasters that they don't reply to comments like ever. Now, I get the grocery girls have like 29,000 people or something. I, I understand if you have 3,000 comments on your video, you're not going to respond to a comment, right? But I've commented on people's podcasts that only have like 20 comments. You can't tell me that you don't have time to even hit the like button, you know? Like I'm not asking for much. And I want to learn from people. I want to meet new people. I want to share this world of ours with you. It's the whole reason I'm doing this because I wanna share, I wanna see your stuff too. So, sorry, I just totally got off on a tangent. But it really does, like, it hurts my heart that there's people that, that don't. And to come out and say, don't message me. <laughs> like, really? I immediately am like, uh, not only will I not message you, but I won't be watching you. How you like them apples? Rewinding, I think, how I got off on that tangent. Imagine that, me on a tangent. I think the how I got off on that tangent is when I found out we were having a podcaster meetup, I immediately went and looked at all the other podcasts so I could watch them and get to know them and see what they're doing. And I'm super excited to meet them. We have, oh no, here's trouble. Did the dad let you in while the mom was podcasting? You can't see him, but let me close the gate. He's trouble. So it allowed me to be able to watch what they were doing and get to know them prior to going, which is super cool. So, because I think that's cool, I have shared uh, a lot of the links and things on a post on Instagram. If you guys go to my page, if you're interested, I made like a little banner thing so you could see what we all looked like and everybody's tagged in it. Lacey from Hooked on Owls started it and she tagged everybody in it. And then I think the rest of us just reposted it for you to see. But it's Rachel from Treehouse Knits. She is, I think at, it might be over now. She just did a mitten cow that of course I was late to the party on because I just found her. And she showed some of the ones in the forum. If you guys are into mittens, uh, I would get on Ravelry and check out her mitten forum just to see all the mittens. It's super cool. There were quite a few underwing mitts in there, which you guys know is on my list and I have yarn for, so I'll get there. There are so many cool mittens. Just to look at that thread is awesome. There is Lacey from Hooked on Owls. She just finished a labyrinth, uh, what's the word? Uh, inspired. God, why was that so hard? A labyrinth inspired shawl that's really cool. There's Tiffany and Ethan on the Woolen Homestead. They are also yarn dyers. I 
found them at just the right time because they had a Q&A. God love them. This Q&A, they did a live Q&A and it was like two and a half hours long. Like, I would have been hoarse. It was awesome because I learned so much about them. So much. Like, he's a hunter. He's into fitness. He plays the bagpipes. She's a dog groomer. I'm really excited to meet them. I wonder if, I want, I bet she's groomed some three-legged dogs. I bet she'll like to meet Olive. Erin from Knitting Envy, if y'all remember, I met her at the Plucky event. So I had started watching her prior to this podcaster meetup coming about. There's Holly from The Proper Pineapple. She does a lot of crochet, but she knits two, I believe. I've only caught a couple of her episodes. There is Kim from Chasing Acorns. Now, she doesn't podcast a whole lot, and they're sort of sporadic, but y'all have heard me talk about her before. I'm actually using it right now. I met her at YarnCon, and she did these super cool uh, acrylic resin pours. It's my coaster. I also got a really cool, like, similar to that, but she dipped a mug in, and it looked all, I don't know. Go back and watch my YarnCon thing if if you're interested, but Kim will be there. Kim is also the one, oh God, for all of you newbies, if you haven't watched that, um, Kim is also the one when I spilled my coffee all over the place at the Plucky event. She thought she did it, and I was like, no, you didn't do it, and she went and got me paper towels, and she's a sweetheart. I'm super excited to see her again. The last one is Cappy from the Yarn and I podcast. I have not, what I did is I added them to my cues and she hasn't posted since then. So I only watched a very short part of her podcast uh, and she hasn't put out another one. So I need to get to know her. I haven't had a chance to get to know her yet. I, as a podcaster, am super excited to meet them. So I hope you guys are as well. Regarding Allegan, I thought it would be fun to have a little something something for y'all. Now, I know a lot of podcasters will have business cards and they'll have the little pins and they have stickers, things like that. I had this brainchild, is that what you call it? I had insomnia one night and I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep and I was thinking about Allegan and for some reason this idea popped in my head. I spoke to Dan about it. Dan is amazing and I, I always say that I'm the picker and he's the putter. So I'll pick it, like I'll pick the thing and he'll put it there. Like whether it's plants, a shel those shelves right here on the wall, this where my project bags are hanging, that's all Dan. My idea and he makes it happen. So I'm the picker and he's the putter. I pick it out, he puts it there. So for this, it was my idea, he made it happen in the real life. Uh, he works also with a gal named Crystal who is a yarny. She is a crocheter and I believe that she wants to start knitting or is looking into knitting. She is definitely into yarn shopping. She actually just went to Indy a couple weeks ago and went to Always in Stitches and Black Sheep Yarns. You guys saw that from my yarn crawl video uh, back early spring, maybe late winter. So she definitely is very appreciative of the yarn arts and she helped make this little thing I had in my head. I really wanted to have something to share with you. Because I don't know how many I'm going to have and because I know it's a very limited supply, well, I had to come up with something fun for y'all to do, right? So here's how it's gonna work. If you see me at Allegan from afar, like even outside of the podcaster meetup. I'm guessing by the time the podcaster meetup comes around, I would think that they would be gone. But who knows? I don't know. Maybe 10 people don't even watch this who go there. You know what I mean? Well, obviously I know more than 10 people watch this. But maybe there won't be 10 people who know who I am up there. So if you see me 
come up to me, say, hey, what's up? Because I love it. Like, you have to say hi. And then say, ask me a question. That's how I'm going to know that you saw this and you know that I have a little something, something. Then I'm going to ask you a question about something about the podcast. I mean, I'm not going to be like, what hat was I wearing in episode six? Nothing like that. I mean, you're not going to have to study for this or anything. I thought it would be fun for, I don't know, you to work for it a little bit, right? <laughs> thought I'd try that. If y'all aren't into it, that's fine too. Maybe nobody will know the answers to the questions. I don't know. Is that dumb? Now that I'm saying it out loud, I feel like it's dumb. I'll come up with questions that are really super easy. How's that? I guess the main thing is I want to make sure that the people who get them are viewers who actually watch the podcast. So if you can answer something that has happened in the past, like my debacle of spilling coffee at Plucky or where I went on my yarn crawl or things like that, then I think that it like you're worthy, right? Of this little something something. And, and now that I've built it up, it's not like a skinny yarn or nothing. <laughs> it's not, it's not that big. There are probably other podcasters who, you know, like pay this and give these things away willy nilly, but I am not rich. So I suppose they, it's less than an enamel pin for sure, but more than like a button. How's that? So anyway, everybody loves free shit, right? So Come say, ask me a question, and I'll ask you a question, and I'll give you something for free. How's that? Allegan, Michigan, August 17th through the 19th. We will be there camping. Be sure to say hi. Be sure to go check out the other podcasters before the meetup so you can know who you're meeting. And I hope, hope, hope to see you there. Last thing I'm going to talk about is I don't normally talk about books. However, I am a very avid Advid. I talk real good. Avid book reader, which actually I'm a book listener because I do Audible. If I read an actual paper book the entire time I'm reading it, my mind wanders because I feel guilty that I'm not knitting. However, Dan watched a podcast, watched, listened, we watch podcasts. Dan listened to a podcast one time where they said that even if you listen to an audible book, you can still consider that you, it's still considered, God, I can't talk. I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost to the end. I haven't had dinner. If you listen to a book, you can consider it as you've read the book. So I love reading books on audible. <laughs> Jake and Ray from Dog Star Knits have teamed up with Mary Beth and Helen from Toad Hollow Yarns? Toad Hollow Yarns. Yes. They both dye yarn and they both have podcasts. Jake and Ray had this idea. To, Helen and Mary Beth heard them announce it they had the same idea, so they said, hey, let's do this together. They are having a read-along of The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I'm going to do it. They have both dyed colorways for the book. I believe Helen and Mary Beth actually did a pre-order for theirs, and I think it's closed. But Jake and Ray is still open. I'll have links, super cool colorway. So you could buy the colorway, you can, oh my God, you guys, freak, scare the shit out of me. <laughs> He's just standing there like ghost in my peripheral. I'm almost done. Dinner and five. Okay, dinner and five. So we're wrapping it up. <sighs> my, like, I, I seriously, my hair stood up and I my heart started racing because I like saw him out of the corner of my eye. Anyway, where was I? Now I'm all sidetracked. 
They have yarn. You can buy the yarn, knit a cool colorway while you're listening to the book, which is what I'm going to be doing. And I think they're going to have other stuff as well. Like there's more to it than just reading the book, I guess. I don't know. There, I know that Jake and Ray are going to have uh, read along or not read along. Yeah, we're going to read it along like they used to read you stories out loud in school. <laughs> Uh, they are going to have discussions on Instagram TV, I believe every Friday evening maybe, and then toward the end of the month, because they're, they're giving you a month to read it, uh, toward the end of the month, the four of them are going to try and do like a Skypey thing somehow, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Currently right now, because I am trying to save money to spend at Allegan, I'm going to pass on the yarn, even though Jake's colorway is awesome, like it is super, super cool. Uh, like I said, Toad Hollow, I believe, their colorway is cool too, but I don't think you can get it anymore. And I am just going to read the book along with them. So I am excited for that. I will, of course, be paying attention to whatever festivities they have throughout the month and we'll go from there. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that was happening in case that was a book that you were interested in reading and wanted a reason to bump it up to the top of your list. It's kind of what happened with me even outside of my comfort zone because I have not finished the book I'm listening to now before starting the second book. I am not one of those people that can listen to two books at once. I, I, I don't know why, I just, I can't wrap my brain around it. Like once I start it, I have to finish it. That being said, I opened up this huge can of worms. I don't know how many of y'all have ever read The Witching Hour by Anne Rice or any Anne Rice book for that matter. It is the first book of hers that I have read. It is a very, very good story. She is an amazing writer. Her descriptive parts of the, I mean, she definitely paints the picture. Every little teeny tiny bit of it. I don't know how long her other books are, but The Witching Hour is a 50 hour book. I still have nine hours left, but I'm gonna pause it and read The Night Circus. <laughs> to put that into perspective for some of you who are not audible listeners or audiobook listeners, I would say an average audiobook at least for me, when I see the hours. I think an eight hour book is a short book. An average is like 10 to 12 hours. The longest book that I've read prior to this would be Stephen King's The Stand. And I think it was about 27, 29, 27, somewhere in there, hours long. And that was a really long book. This is 50 hours. So here's where I'm at with it. Nine hours left. It's a very good story, but I'm over it. I want it to be over. However, I have dedicated so much time to it at this point that I'm at like that point of no return. I want to know what happens, but I want it to be over. Ugh. I'm going to pause it for a little bit take a break and maybe it'll be nice to go back to it and just basically hear the end of it right at nine hours it's the end of the 50 hour long story <laughs> so if you like long books and like Anne Rice the witching hour is a very good book it's just dedication to the extreme at least for me I'm going to close on that. I'm going to go eat some dinner. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that happy horse shit. I hope I see you guys all at Allegan. I don't know if I'll record before then or not. Currently, I've been on every two weeks, but you never know what will happen in this crazy world. 
thank you guys so much for listening to the trials and tribulations that we went through with Miss Olive. I know that a lot of you are animal lovers and I do get a lot of comments on her and I know that you you love yourselves some pugs just like we do. So I thought that you would be interested. If you fast forwarded it and you're not uh, an animal person, that's cool too, I get it. I don't like kids, so no hard feelings, I promise. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening and coming back every week and all that stuff. So I hope you guys have an awesome world until we meet again and uh, we'll catch you later, bye.